Hello, my name is Rajesh Francis and I'm a Senior Customer Experience Specialist at AWS. In this demo, I will use a real business use case to walk you through how you can use Amazon Redshift Serverless to gain business insights quickly with a simplified user experience, scale based on your workloads for fast performance with all existing Redshift functionality and pay for just the compute capacity you use. With Amazon Redshift Serverless, you can analyze all data across your data warehouse, data lake, and operational database, and use standard SQL to run queries and gain business insights. You can also securely share live data inside and outside of your organization to improve collaboration, isolate critical workloads, and enable real-time insights, and even deploy machine learning models using standard SQL. We will demonstrate this capability using a real business use case for sales analysis. Let's say I'm a data analyst with the marketing department of a large US apparel company with both US retail stores and an online presence. It's a few weeks into the holiday season and the marketing team has been tasked with creating a new holiday promotion. I'm working on the analysis that will arrive at this recommendation. Previously, when I wanted to do this using our on-premises data warehouse, I needed to wait for IT to set up, configure, and tune the warehouse, which meant I could not get access to the powerful data analytics as quickly as I needed. We will see how I can use Amazon Redshift Serverless and Amazon QuickSight to quickly derive insights and identify the most effective marketing promotion. Amazon Redshift Serverless is an on-demand auto-scaling data warehouse that automatically scales capacity up or down based on incoming analytics workload. I can get started right away with Amazon Redshift Serverless from the AWS Management Console by choosing Try Amazon Redshift Serverless. The first time I'm given the option to create my serverless endpoint and using the default settings I can create with a single click. I can also choose to customize my settings by selecting the VPC security group and subnet. All serverless endpoints are encrypted by default using AWS owned KMS key, but I can change this to use AWS customer managed key as well. Audit logging is turned off by default, but I can turn it on for detailed tracking. To run queries on Amazon S3 Data Lake, I can grant permission by associating an IAM role to my endpoint. And now I can start create, create my cluster. Now it takes a few minutes for the Amazon Redshift serverless endpoint to be created. Now that my Amazon Redshift serverless endpoint is created, when I choose Amazon Redshift from the console, I'm taken to the console where all provision clusters are listed and choosing go to serverless takes me to the serverless dashboard. Here I can find details of the databases within the endpoint, query summary with option to filter queries based on completed queries or active queries running or in the queue. Redshift processing unit is the compute capacity used and it is shown here. In addition, I can also access all the data shares in the account and data shares that require authorization in current account or association from other accounts. I can start analyzing sales right away by choosing query data, and this will take me to the new query editor. Amazon Redshift Query Editor v2 is a free serverless web interface that allows me to author and run queries on Amazon Redshift Data Warehouse. I can log in by choosing serverless and entering a database username and entering a password or choosing temporary credentials. Here, I can take advantage of preloaded sample data sets, including benchmark data sets like TPC Hatch, TPC DS, and other sample queries to kickstart my analytics immediately. I can also create databases, schemas, tables, and even load data using a visit. In the navigation menu on the top left of the console, I have more options. In serverless configuration page, I see details about my serverless namespace, user and database name, the endpoint, JDBC, ODBC URLs for connection from SQL client. The data backup tab under this lists details on manual snapshots and automated recovery points. The data access tab has network and security details like VPC, security group, encryption, and audit logging details. Uh, the IAM role permissions and VPC endpoints are also listed here. I can also set the base capacity and usage limits from the limits tab. The base capacity default is 128, but I can set between 32 and 512 in increments of 8. I can set upper limits for compute usage of my serverless by hours, by daily, weekly, or monthly schedule, 
and get alerts or terminate user queries based on these limits. Data Shares tab has details on the data shares created in the serverless namespace, as well as data shares from other namespaces and accounts. Under the monitoring section, I can get to the details for query summary and resource usage from the navigation bar. The query and database monitoring page shows query history and database performance. And in the query history tab, I see graph of query runtimes across a timeline. And the queries and load section has details of all the queries with start time, duration, and I can also drill down to the actual query plan for analysis. Database performance tab shows a lot more details like queries completed per second, database connections, and actively running queries. Resource monitoring shows the overall capacity used in Redshift processing units or RPUs and cumulative usage of Redshift serverless by period for a selected time range. I can also view the details of the query summary and RPU capacity by choosing View Details in the serverless dashboard. When I choose View Details, it takes me to the same view as in the monitoring section. Let us take a look at the source of data for my sales analysis. In our S3 data lake, we have the historical sales data for years older than recent three years. As you can see, I have data for 2017 and 2018, and these are Parquet files. The sales transactions where the order details and current inventory are captured are av available in Aurora serverless. I can query this data and you can see the order values for the whole year, for the last two years. And we have a current three years of data, anal analytics data, ingested into Redshift and updated on a daily basis for further analysis. From within Query Editor v2, I can analyze all the data we just saw by creating external reference schemas to the source data. I can query and analyze local data in Redshift directly, data in S3 Data Lake, and transactional data in Aurora Serverless. Sales Schema has local data, which I will query now. I can also visualize my results in charts and collaborate by sharing with my team. Sales RDS is reference to transactional data. I can analyze right from here using this reference schema and tables. And Redshift Federated Query feature sends the query to Aurora and gets the results back. Sales S3 is reference to data in my S3 data lake. And Redshift Spectrum feature allows me to query the sales data in my S3 data lake right from here. Now I can create a view, v sales all, to combine sales data from all sources and analyze for trends. I also combine store sales and web sales using another view, which reads the view we just created, v, v sales all. And now that I have everything together, let's dive into the numbers. Now it's time to run the queries. I will analyze sales using the new query editor, v2, to find out how we are doing this holiday season. I see a drop in sales in October and November for 2021 compared to the last two years. Now let me drill down to find out what categories exactly are causing this drop in sales. Oh yes, I see that men and women category has the maximum decline of sales. Let me see what promotions would be effective to boost sales based on previous year's promotions that we've run. Our marketing team has reviewed previous year's promotions and removed anomalies specific for those years. Now I have this promotions dataset in my S3 bucket, which I can use to analyze which promotions were effective. Now I can load this promotions data using the new simple and intuitive data load wizard within Query Editor v2. In the wizard, I will choose the source file and select the target table to load the promotions. The data load wizard automates this load by executing a copy command behind the scenes. Now this data set will help me analyze the impact of past promotions and strengthen my recommendation. As this is the holiday season, many analysts like me across the company are trying to analyze this data by slicing and dicing to inform our holiday strategy. And this has led to a 200% increase in query workload this month. With our previous data warehouse, all the analysts and decision makers would be at a standstill waiting for the IT department to enable more capacity to serve up the reports. Today, I don't have to worry about capacity or how many other people are querying. 
Amazon Redshift Serverless automatically provisions and scales data warehouse capacity to deliver consistent, fast performance for the most demanding and unpredictable workload like ours. Also, we only pay for the capacity we use for the duration of our workload. We don't have to over provision and pay for extra capacity or under provision and suffer from low performance. Let's go behind the scenes and look at how Redshift has scaled based on our workload using the system serverless usage view, which has 30 minute average usage. With serverless, we measure capacity using Redshift processing units. And here you see the RPU has scaled from 0 to 640 for peak workloads. Now this is the average workload for 30 minute. It's a 30 minute average usage. Now I will analyze Redshift serverless usage per minute using Amazon QuickSight, which is a cloud scale business intelligence service used to visualize and analyze data. This is a chart that shows query count in blue versus query execution time in green versus serverless RPU, which is compute in orange colors. As you can see, the RPU starts off at zero and peaks at 1408 and it aligns with the maximum number of queries and it goes back down to zero when there are no queries. But even with the peak workload of queries, the query execution time, which you see in green here, remains consistent. This shows Amazon Redshift Serverless is able to scale to process the incoming queries as they come. And when the execution time increases back again, Amazon Redshift Serverless is able to scale, scale up, and you see the query execution come, coming down and becomes consistent. To provide visibility of our sales and inventory data to our suppliers, we can securely share data using Redshift Data Sharing. I have created a view to share only the sales quantity without any pricing details. Now I will create a sales data share and add the view BPOS data to this share and grant access to my vendor's AWS account using cross-account data sharing feature. The data is shared live and securely without having to move the data around. Our vendors can view most recent sales data to better forecast and improve their supply chain planning process to meet any increase in demand. Now, when a vendor logs into their Redshift cluster, their analysts are able to query our POS sales data by associating a cluster and creating an external database. This can then be used to feed into their supply chain process for better planning. to deliver easy to understand insights to my sales leaders. From my earlier analysis in Redshift, I found out that men and women category is where we see the most decline in sales. With QuickSight, I will drill into this further to see what class of products are causing this decline. I'll focus on women first, and I see that sales of dresses have the most decline. Then for men, I see that pants have the most decline in sales. Now I can analyze the past promotions to find out which promotions were effective. I see the 20% off promotions have been most effective for the past two years. So now I have all the information I need to provide an informed recommendation to my leadership. We have seen how as an analyst, I was able to quickly use Amazon Redshift Serverless to load, analyze, and visualize using QuickSight to gain deeper business insights. Thank you.